All right, in this video, we're going to talk about sequential least squares. Okay? Here's the idea. Let's assume we're doing something linear. Let's do the same problem we had before. Uh, this is lift coefficient. We've got some data. Let's actually assume that we just have like Mm, yeah. Let's assume we have three data points, okay? So if we look at our y bar, and I'm going to call this y bar 0, we've got a y1 bar, a y2 bar, and a y3. Okay, and that's going to give us that's three measurements, okay? Now, if we were using the method of uh, weighted least squares regression, we would say that our x tilde naught, so our estimate of our state, was h transpose w h. And I'm going to put knots in here. Inverse h transpose y bar naught. Okay? We could do that and everything would be well and good, right? And then we fit our equation and we get a line that looks like this. Okay? And let's assume for the sake of the argument that every time we get a measurement, we get three up. We get three measurements. Okay, our, our sensor is like boom, boom, boom. So it's like every 10 seconds we get three measurements. I don't know why, but let's just say for the sake of the argument. Okay? Well, you know, 10 seconds goes by and all of a sudden you get boom, 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 right? You gotta fit the data again. Now, if you were doing this the the brute force way, you would throw all this out, you would create a new matrix, which was, let's say, y bar 4, y bar 5, y bar 6, and then you would append that to the big vector, and you would get y bar 0, 1, which was y bar 1 all the way down to y bar 6, and then your x tilde 0, 1 would be h transpose 0, 1, which would be the two matrices appended, uh, W01, H01, inverse, H01, transpose, Y bar, 01, okay? Then you would get three more measurements, and then, by the way, that X tilde more than likely fit the data like that, and so this would be sort of your X tilde 0, and this would be X tilde 01. So it would be the uh, best fit, this is the best fit with just the first met three measurements, and this is the best fit with the extra three measurements. And so you could go down the line and you could just keep doing this over and over and over again every time you get three measurements, concatenate the matrices, and do it over and over again, which is a very sloppy way to do it, okay? The, the, the better way to do it is to come back to here and say, okay, step one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my initial y bar naught, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to create a matrix called P and I'm going to call that P naught, and that's going to be H0, W0, H transpose, H0 inverse. And if you notice, that's just the first part of this here. Okay? So I'm going to create P naught there. And then I'm going to use Gauss's law, and I'm going to create my update, or, or my, my initial estimate. And so if you look at this equation, it's just going to be P naught, H naught transpose, Y bar naught. Okay? Then, every time you get a measurement, right, so this is going to, so I'm going to call 1K, so say you get boom, 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 where this is X tilde 0, 1, K, and I'm just going to call it X tilde K for short. Every time you get a, I'm going to call this XK plus 1, sorry. Every time you get a new set of measurements, you use this update law. So what you do is you assume K of K plus 1, so it's capital K, is pk h k plus 1 transpose h k plus 1 pk h k plus 1 plus w k inverse inverse. 
Okay? PK plus one. So that's your common, that's, this is what's called like clearly the common gain matrix. PK plus one is identity minus your common gain matrix. HK plus one times PK, okay? And so basically, when you get to your next measurement, this is gonna be P naught, and this is gonna be H1, and this is gonna be K1 identity, and this is gonna give you P1. You're gonna get a new set of measurements, and you're gonna get P2, and then P3, and then P4, and so on and so forth, okay? And so, from there, you then need to estimate, update your state, and you're gonna do XK plus one, is xk, so that's your previous measurement, or previous estimate, sorry, plus k, k plus 1, and this is where the beauty comes in, is that you don't need to use y01 is all of your measurements stacked together, and what happens is, is that this is a 3 by 1, right? This is a 6 by 1. If you do it again, you're going to get a 9 by 1, and you're going to go so on and so forth. Your y vector is going to get huge. Not to mention, H01, you have to think about H01, right? You have Y equal equals HX, okay? So if this is a three by one, and this is a two by one, it means H is a three by two. Well, H01 then is a six by two, and so H is gonna grow and grow and grow and grow. That's not so for these. These H knots and HKs plus one, they're the same size every single time. And so the beauty of it is, is that when you take this measurement here, this is y bar, I think the notation is k plus one, k plus one. So you don't take, you don't stack your measurements together. You just take your new three measurements and you plug it in and you need to subtract off hk plus one, x tilde k, okay? And so you look at this, this is kind of like your residuals. This is like your new, uh, your new measurement, and this is like a residual between this, right? So if you look at this, H, if this was H1 times X tilde naught, that would be all the way up here, right? Because that's your initial regression equation. So this, and then these here, these are your new measurements. And so this minus this is basically your residual between your two measurements. And then you multiply that by this common gain, and that gives you a new estimate. And so the, the beauty of this is that the size of these matrices don't grow. So if you're running this on a microprocessor, and you have space constraints and volume constraints for the number of bits of data that you can store, you, you wouldn't be able to handle these matrices growing and growing and growing and growing. You'd have to do this, where the so you could just allocate the size of the matrix as soon as the, the, the code starts rather than having to do that, because this is gonna take dynamic allocation, right? Unless you start like throwing out data, right? Which is, I think, a terrible idea. What you wanna do is you wanna use the knowledge that you've had, right? Keep the other measurements embedded in these equations, and then use that to update your equations there, okay? And so this is linear um, sequential least squares regression. I would say this part here, more than likely, makes total sense. The derivation for this is pretty nasty. There's a lot of matrix algebra and things like that, so I didn't want to show you on the board here. I would just say this, this just you know, take it as is and just understand the concepts. And the concepts is, is that I'm using my previous value and this common gain matrix, which is basically sort of an update based on this like covariance matrix P, that's kind of what they call it, and using that to update my state. Okay, and then the derivation is, is not entirely necessary, okay? Uh, the next video then is going to uh, basically combine all of these, all, in all, all the stuff that we've learned here. So it's a priori, a priori knowledge of my state. It is sequential least squares regression. It is weighted least squares regression. And it's putting all of those things together into the column filter, which involves state and covariance propagation uh, using model dynamics, and then a least squares update when I get a new measurement, and putting those two things together. Okay, so we'll derive the formal common filter in the next video, and then that will be it for this series on common filters. Cool?